and, and frankly, don't we don't know, according to Tammy. And uh, Tammy, while we have you there in Sky, what else can you tell us about location? They're just passing Maine right now, heading westbound on the south loop. And like Catherine mentioned, uh, about to hit probably a lot more congestion. I'm going to zoom out here. Right now, it's uh, pretty light where he is right now. We've got, I think, police officers on the other side uh, as well. Maybe perhaps at some point they might try to use the stop sticks. Uh, he's been weaving in and out. It looked like he almost took uh, a couple different exits. Uh, but if he gets off on one of those exits, I think it might be a little bit easier for police to grab him. Uh, maybe that's why he's staying on the freeway. Way, but going at a pretty high speed uh, a clip, uh, definitely more than 50, 55, 60 miles per hour, maybe even 65. We have no problems keeping up with them. And again, we have about four or five police officers behind them, as well as a police, ho uh, police helicopter up above. So a lot of eyes on this guy. And we can just, again, only hope that it ends without any injury. All right, and he just took that exit towards South Post Oak. So that's where he's going to end up off the freeway in a couple of minutes as he curves around here and heads toward the uh, South Post Oak exit. Do we, we'll do try we, and keep up with him here yeah. if he didn't try to get off on the... No, now he's, he's, now he's veering out. off and he's getting on the, uh, on the West Loop northbound, it appears, right? He's riding that lane of, well, he went well, left, so it looks like he is now on that South Post Oak, Tom, as you mentioned, yep, uh, yep. heading that direction. He didn't make uh, it. So he did not go on to, he did not continue on the loop. So he is now off the loop at this point now right. and taking that ramp lane, that elevated ramp onto South Post Oak. And you see that police car right behind him right now, several of them here uh, as he emerges off the freeway. And, and uh, Catherine, you can tell us, though, that traffic usually is really heavy it, in these areas. Yeah, yeah, it yes. is. It I usually mean, is. And, you know, he would have hit that wall of traffic headed northbound on the 610 West Loop, headed toward the Galleria area if he had just merged right. But now he went left. So he's headed south down South Post Oak, where there's a lot less traffic. As you can see, though, they're on the opposite side of the lanes there. That's inbound yes. traffic heading toward the Galleria right. area. And that's where you see a lot of uh, those heavier conditions, south but south really south making those very dangerous Maneuvers going those high that high rate of speed past trucks past traffic staying in that left lane to try to get through. Yep, but he just passed that Belfort exit, so he is now going south on South Post Oak. And but, he's going to come to a couple of neighborhoods right. here as he continues on. And now we get to intersections too, which right, is with a, the stoplights. A very 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 scary situation uh, coming up to this intersection right here. Oh well, he appears to be in a turning lane. Uh, doing a U-turn, but Catherine, you showed us the traffic right. back the other way, which was bumper to bumper, so we'll see how this one uh, pans out. And again, going back through an intersection, though, um, boy, this is just scary. I just can't believe this is happening during morning traffic. Yeah. I really can't. It looks like he used a turn lane to go back the opposite right. direction, a very dangerous maneuver there. But if he continues going northbound right now, he's headed north, heading back toward the 610 South Loop. Uh, if he continues this direction, he will certainly hit that traffic. Is he on the feeder? It appears, it appears as though he's going to go back on the south loop eastbound. If he continues to go, oh, no, now he's moving no, around no. again. He's going to turn around and let's see what he does here. Oh, going right into an intersection, going ahead at the wrong way yes. in traffic. OK, turning back around, making a loop. And, yep. and Tammy, Tammy, we can hear you, too. Back okay, on yeah, yeah, southbound on Post Oak again. We were trying to get whatever that exit was. It looked like he was going to take that and head westbound. However, he is again southbound on Post Oak. And I apologize, the camera's going to spin out of control here for a second. Well, Tammy, you've been doing a great job following uh, your pilot, too, as well. Headed towards to get South here. Main right now. Headed towards South towards Main. South Main. South Main. Again, another intersection with the traffic light there as you go to South Main. And then he's going to run into even more traffic Here's lights. A big intersection here. Right, as he continues down. He looks like he had the green light there. The traffic stopped coming from his left and right. And Tom, you've been saying it uh, throughout this uh, chase. It's just incredible to see the traffic sort of wide open this morning. It, at the 8 o'clock hour, I mean, but really, we can only be thankful for that. Here he is mm -hmm. uh, sort of trying to figure it out. I, I, you know, we have no idea why this suspect is running. Uh, this chase uh, began, uh, I guess, around 7.50 or so. We heard it uh, at I-10 and John Ralston. We are now... Uh, there is a report. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Tammy. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, it looks like he might be slowing down a little mm -hmm. bit. We're in contact with the police helicopter here. We have a little bit more information that we're not going to pass uh, along to you right now, but it did look like he was weebling a little bit. Um, I don't know if it's a tire, but it does look like, let me zoom out just for a second to see if it looks like he might be slowing down a little bit. Um, yeah. It was wobbling. 
um, for a little bit. But again, he is southbound on Post Oak. We'll try to get you another exit here, but it does look like uh, he's driving a little bit differently right now. He's not weaving in and out of the traffic right now. So I don't know if there's some car issues or something else going on. Coming Certainly up on just past Gesmer. Uh, yep, you're right. Not going nearly as fast as he was, so there's a possibility there that they may be dealing with some car issues. So for those of you who are just now joining us and maybe you are riding in the car and listening to us on our ABC 13 app, you should be aware that there's a police chase going on. Uh, and Tammy and Catherine Whaley are covering it as well and can give you uh, exact locations where we are right now. Crossing South Main on South, on South Post Oak, I believe right now. Just went under and South again, Main. And again, it does look like he has slowed down a little bit. Again, we don't know if it is car issues or whatever, but the driving is a little bit less erratic. Uh, and again, we still have four or five police officers behind him. We have two police helicopters Break up lights. above. Brake lights here. And again, he is heading in the opposite direction now, northbound on Post Oak. Yeah, and it looks as though the left rear tire may be going flat. Uh, and you see him. Wearing a baseball, a baseball white cap. baseball cap, uh, looking down, it appears. I don't know if he's looking at a phone or, or what's going on there, but looking down and, and driving. Is he picking up speed there, Tammy? Well, I, it looked like he was slowing down for a little bit and then weaving back and forth. So, I, I get it. We couldn't tell if there was some sort of car issues or if there was a tire, maybe a low tire. I know that they didn't get stop sticks in front of him, um, obviously, but it does seem like there's just maybe some sort of issue. Uh, but he's continuing on northbound on Post Oak. I'll try to give you an exit where he's coming up on right now. It looks like there's quite a bit of traffic up ahead of him. So, well, you know, you can only hope that maybe he might get boxed in and police officers will be able to get. Yeah, he'll be coming up to him. he'll be coming up to Main Street very, very soon, which he just passed as he was going southbound. Now he's headed northbound going up the same route. Yes, that is correct. And again, I'm trying to find him. You got him. He kind of blends in occasionally with all the other traffic, but we still have the police officers behind. There he him. is. There he is right there right in the there. center. Right there near the white van, passing the white van now. He's uh, towards the back of the, there you are, the right brain, there, yep, right there. The left. And he's still going. I mean, this has been going on since about 750 or so. He's, uh, he's been slowing down, speeding up, and, and driving just erratically uh, during traffic. Here we are again. Uh, We're hearing they might do a pit maneuver here okay. shortly. Okay. They're talking about possibly doing a pit maneuver. Well, and at this point, you see drivers who've heard the police helicopters and probably know that something is going on in that area. Uh, but he is still continuing in that middle lane, headed northbound on South Post Oak near Maine, uh, getting closer to the loop once again. And he's made multiple U-turns, uh, going in circles here, basically around South Post Oak, between the 610 loop and Maine. But continuing on northbound, using that middle lane, and heading north and it seems to be slowing down once again uh, but police officers right behind him yeah sky 13 doing a great job of keeping up with him uh, from tammy we know that it is a male suspect and uh, we've seen just from sky zooming into the uh, the driver's side window that uh, uh, and also the windshield we could see that he's wearing a white baseball cap appears to be looking down occasionally and we know he's been driving erratically he's coming to a stop here because of traffic not exactly sure where he is. This suspect has been all over the place. He, we saw him driving on the sidewalk. Very dangerous maneuvers going on here. Uh, where are we right now, uh, Tammy? Well, we're hearing from police that they also believe he might have a weapon. So okay. again, if you're anywhere in the area, stay away from this guy. He's heading northbound. Uh, let me get you an exit here. Um, I know past Maine. Um, he's headed back towards the 610, the loop again. Okay. Um, and again, we're getting some of this information from the police helicopter where they believe that he uh, might be armed. So again, this even adds to a more dangerous situation right now as he has been driving erratically all over the place. Yeah, and it, I'm going to zoom out to see where he might go again. To see. Well, this looks like now the exit here, if we can get a better picture of that, as he goes onto the south loop eastbound again. It appears as though he may be doing that. That is the uh, 
flyover that goes onto the West Loop DC. from South Post Oak. We just walk. That is Belford. That Belford. That's Belford. Yeah, okay. Okay. Do we see him? Is did he make the turn? He it looks like police it, are yeah. continuing straight ahead. So it, it appears he may have uh, continued on too. You see police there, and he's just ahead of the other police car. Yeah. Like, to your left, Tammy. To your left, a little bit, Tammy. You see the police car there, and he's just ahead. Of, there he is, he's right there, in the center of the screen. He did not take that flyover ramp from no, he didn't. Post Oak onto no. the 610 South Oak. So currently he is still headed northbound uh, on Post Oak past Belfort. So continuing on toward the gallery area, but using those surface streets instead of getting onto the loop. And in a situation That's like... That's correct. Yeah, and again, you know, I'm talking to uh, my pilot up here, Kim Page, who's doing an excellent job. He's keeping in contact uh, with the police helicopters, also getting information as well, which we're hearing. They're really trying to do that pit maneuver. Uh, you know, again, this is just such a dangerous situation with him weaving in and out of traffic. And again, this is during rush hour. Uh, so hopefully this may come to an end again. And it looks like he might be slowing down a little bit. Let me zoom out so we can see all the traffic ahead of him. Um, but at least there is a little less traffic here as he continues. Well, that is appears he's on the service road going past Meyer Park Mall right there. Uh -huh. Potentially about to jump back on 610, right? Yeah, that's uh -huh. what I was thinking. He had the flyover loop would have taken him onto the west loop. This is now the eastbound lanes of the south loop once again. Yeah. Which is Along the where he came loop, westbound. Which means he will be headed back towards the NRG uh, stadium area. Right, he is now on the feeder road of the 610 South Loop headed eastbound. So, yes, Samika, just as you said, going that direction toward the area around NRG, headed back toward 288 on the 610 South Loop. Now he's back onto the freeway, uh, going into that middle lane, uh, right past the Stella Link exit off of the 610 South Loop eastbound. And you can see he's right there, kind of merging into the middle of traffic. And we had a closer up shot before that it appeared his left rear tire was very, very low, almost as where he might be running on the rims, but he doesn't seem to be affected, or his driving doesn't seem to be affected by that if one of his tires is low. I think it is uh, low, very low. Maybe, maybe on flat there, it appears. Yeah. Hard it, to see. Yeah, it's very hard to see. It looks like it could be a shadow, but I believe he is riding on a rim. And, it, and you can see there, Tom, he isn't going as fast as he was uh, when he was on uh, the freeway. Uh, just previous to this. Look how wide open the loop down, is this though. morning. Yeah, it is. Traffic and and wise. really, thankfully, it's nice. wide open because this is a very dangerous situation. But once again, Catherine, Catherine, he'll run into that construction near 288, and Look that is really a slowdown on most mornings. In fact, the traffic backs up for anywhere from one to two miles there on some mornings as people try and get through. Absolutely. You know, we see all that construction in that area there, the interchange with 288 and the 610 South Loop, a lot of those ramps being constructed as we speak, and that usually causes big, heavy delays this time in the morning. Although now that we're getting a little bit past the density of the rush hour, uh, could see a little more movement in that area now. And as you can see there on the 610 South Loop between 288 and where the South Loop becomes the West Loop, we've actually had some pretty clear conditions, which has allowed this suspect to pick up speed, not only going eastbound like he is right now, but also headed westbound uh, as he did a few minutes ago. And Catherine, look at that back tire, though. Mm -hmm. that, there, there's a problem there. You can actually see smoke coming from the back of that tire because he's riding on the rim. Look at this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. the, the, the driver's side uh, back tire. You see police kind of getting close to him because he can't go as fast now because of that back tire. We'll see how this one, hopefully this one will end soon, but safely, as you mentioned. Well, let's hope so because he's approaching uh, now 45 minutes of fleeing from police as yeah, he started right. at John Ralston at I-10 on the east side and then came back down the loop and on the uh, south loop eastbound down Post Oak and now he's back on the south loop westbound heading once again past Energy Stadium and approaching Highway 288. And uh, according to police this we could be dealing with a, an armed suspect here. Uh, so that tire creating quite a few problems and police getting close to him potentially to do a there pit go. maneuver there. Trying to do it there. We just did the, uh, tried to do a pit maneuver right here, so definitely, hopefully, this will come to an end before it gets to the 288. Definitely, you can see uh, that tire almost riding on the rim right now, so he's finally pulling over pulling to over. the side, and then, of course, we have to... Right, let's see where this chase... Or hopeful this will end peacefully. All right, police out, guns drawn. Suspect still in the vehicle.
This is right near Stella Loop. This is the eastbound lanes of the South Loop right there, Stella Link, near the uh, Energy Stadium, the Dome. This driver is still in his car. Still in the vehicle. We know this is a male suspect, and police have said that he is potentially armed, so you can see them sort of taking their position there behind the police SUV. Appears to still be inside the car this time. He does, and now you'll have anywhere from half a dozen to a dozen police vehicles behind him and officers uh, hunkered down behind their cars there this morning as they wait to see what happens next. Guns drawn. You see the officers there. Just an incredibly tense situation as you try to figure out whether he's going to come out of the car with his hands up, um, whether he's still in the car and if he was armed. At one point we had a chase last year where a suspect took his life inside the car at the end of the chase. Yeah. as we just sort of wait and see what happens next. And just to remind everybody where this location is, this again is the 610 South Loop eastbound. They are close to NRG. They passed Stella Link. This appears to be an exit. I don't have confirmation on the exact exit this is right now, but again, it's on near the 610 Kirby. South Loop. Uh, it sounds like near Kirby. Tammy, thank you for that. So near Kirby. So that's right there by NRG, you know, just a couple days after the rodeo has shut down. Uh, right there, we see a lot of traffic this time in the morning. So at this point, the 610 South Loop eastbound is completely blocked off. Uh, well, we're, we're waiting to see how this how this Traffic's unfolds. Starting to back up a little bit behind the freeway is closed, uh, as Tammy is saying. And, any, and any more chatter, Tammy, from the Houston Police Department helicopter? You know, I am actually zooming in here on the front of the car. I can't tell if that actually is a bullet hole or not. Um, oh yes. There hasn't, I don't see any movement inside the vehicle. And again, the freeway is shut down, 610 South Loop at Kirby. Uh, no, oh, it looks no. like he might be getting out. Looks like he might be getting out. Yep. There's some movement, now he closed the door. Yep. I was going to say earlier. You just hold your breath at the end of these. You just never know how they're going to mm -hmm. end up. I, I was going to say earlier, Tammy, that we were starting to see some movement there in the front, towards the front windshield. I couldn't tell if it was hands or or here here's a, a lot of movement going on here it seems to be checking his pockets yep. uh still wearing that white baseball cap looking yep. around not sure what he's looking for uh very tense moments here police uh set up behind him guns drawn we saw the door he has something in his hand there like it, he's checking his pockets it, it appears like it's a cell phone a cell phone that is plugged in and okay. i did see him you know put something in his jacket it looked like so um you know, you never know in this situation. You don't know if he's just contemplating whether he's going to get out or not. But uh, yeah, the door is opening. Like he might be getting out of the door. But again, you know, police don't know how this is going to end. He looks like he's starting up the jacket. vehicle again. He does. And he's driving yes, off. He's driving he off. With his cell phone and his hands out the window. Yes, and his cell phone, it looked like maybe he... Uh, got such a clear shot He's of him. He's definitely playing with his cell phone. Cell phone, or it appears to be a cell phone, and checking pockets, and he opened the door, closed the door back, and started sort of searching around, it appeared. Looks like, as you mentioned, Tammy, that he has a cell phone, but it appears to be plugged in uh, to something there. Well, we we saw the cord. Right. I mean, it looks like it looks like he might be texting, um, and it looks like it's a phone. Obviously, we're you know, not 100 percent sure, but we did see that phone cord um, look like he was plugging it in. And right now, it just appears that he is. Well, he has his hands up. Hands now. out the window, showing his cell phone, showing his cell phone out the window. Hands what he's doing right phone. there. We don't know if he's on the phone with someone now or. And usually in these situations, if you've been at the end of these, police are yelling, get out of the car with your hands up, get out of the car and on the ground. And they are right on top of him. Look at all the officers with guns drawn. Because remember... There were tense moments here. Right. Remember, police were saying uh, that they didn't know if this suspect was armed 
you know, during throughout this uh, chase. So they are taking a stance, and you see them with their guns drawn. This has just been. You just have to wonder why he's not getting out of the car. If he's calling someone and talking to them. We are all sort of know, holding our breath gonna, here as we wait this a one out. Bit, I know, because you're worried that uh, this may turn into something else. Look at all the lanes closed down now and people on the other side going westbound on the south loop. Obviously, the rubbernecking going on, people going, what in the world? Because they can see that it's the end of a police chase or a police activity right there. Right. This the is the south dog. loop near Kirby. They pre they're preparing the police dog as well. We also have a well. police dog mm -hmm. uh, that is inching up towards the car as well, along with all the police officers with their guns drawn. All right, let's see if they let the dog do its work. We also look like we have somebody that's possibly uh, a SWAT team SWAT. member with mm -hmm. a rifle. Right? He's taken like off he's again. again. And everybody has to get back in their vehicles. Again, he can't drive too fast because of that wheel. The back left wheel is almost off the rim, so yeah. he's not going to get that far. That left, back left tire is peeling off right now as he tries to, to go again. He's not going to go very far on that kind of uh, damaged wheel. Well, I tell you, these are heart-pounding moments. <laughs> I, I, you can only imagine. For the officers, what, right for the there the officers, too. you can only imagine what, what's going on in these police units. What they are saying, what you know, what they're thinking, uh, the things that they have to be aware of. Potentially an armed suspect. We know he's been moving around a lot in the car because we can see that he's been checking what appears to be his pockets and maybe pocket look the door's opening again here yep. so we don't know if he's about to jump out or yep. what's happening he's driving along with the door open yep. a few moments ago he stuck both hands out of the car with a cell phone yep. there we just don't know what's about to happen here so he's right in front of the nrg stadium we zoom out here so you can kind of get a better look at things the freeway again is shut down eastbound on the south loop causing traffic and delays on the other side obviously sure. people can see what's going on on the other side of the freeway and again he's just inching along because of that tire that's about to and frankly we hope people on the other side will will not look but will actually get out of the way of all of this because we just have no idea what's about to happen here. That's the dome footbridge that leads from the uh, Energy Park area just south of the dome and Energy Stadium across the 610 loop. As you watch the end, we hope, of this police chase that began about almost 45, maybe 50 minutes ago on the east side of Houston, then wound its way down the east loop to the south loop and then back again eastbound on the south loop where you're now watching it at slow speed this is a guy who sat in his car had his door open as he said looked like he had his phone out his window but he's obviously reaching for something with his right hand as he continues here's to open the, the door, door again, with his left Tom. hand here's the door the door is wide uh, it's a little wider than we've seen all right uh, he'd been just sort of cracking the door open yeah. okay he closed the door again and you know of course police officers on the scene with their guns drawn have to be very very wary of firing at him with so much traffic around right. on the other side of the freeway and, and perhaps innocent people getting hit. We just have no idea what's going through this, this suspect's mind. Uh, and, yeah. This officer is preparing for anything at this point. Obviously a situation where you have traffic like this still in the rush hour. So many people on the opposite side of the freeway as well. The 610 South Loop eastbound is shut down currently as they pursue this suspect. But you see a lot of rubberneckers there and a lot of congestion on the 610 South Loop headed westbound. A lot of people take that from 288 or from I-45, the Gulf Freeway, to get to the Galleria area where tens of thousands of people office and go to every day. So a, a very heavily traveled area uh, as we continue to look at this, this chase. Honestly, there, it appears he may have had the phone uh, or something up to his ear. Um, just judging by the jacket he has on with the yeah. stripe there. Um, it appears that he had something up to his ear. I don't know if he's talking on the phone, talking to someone. He's reaching over now. You see his white baseball cap sort of leaning over towards the passenger side. We just have no clue what's happening no. here. He seemed to be leaning back, reaching into his pockets several times. He's been moving around yeah, quite a bit like inside the car. He's grabbing onto his stomach or his shirt or something like that. I mean, and now he's leaning forward 
against, you know, the the steering wheel. So yeah. it looks like there might be something wrong with him. Right. As well, um, because he just doesn't look all right. I mean, in the, his position that he's taking and leaning across the steering wheel, so he might be hurt. Again, we were hearing reports that he had a, a gun, perhaps, or that he was armed. So, you know, perhaps he is hurt, but you can see him now leaning over to the right. So, um, he doesn't appear to be alert uh, either. I'm going to zoom out again so you can get a better picture. Uh, him just passing the NRG Stadium, police officers uh, in full force behind him. The freeway shut down, and he's stopping again. All right, here he stops now. And we'll see whether he gets out of the car. Just so strange and so Here's tense the these moments that the door opens and closes again. This is probably the, the fifth time uh, that the door has opened and closed and, and maybe the fourth time that he stopped. And now police again out, guns drawn. Right. And he takes off yet again. again. You know, we've had so He's, many strange twists and turns in police chases over the years here as we've watched them unfold the on live TV. Now, Tom. Right. Um, we had a woman last year who actually called the station right. as she was leading police on a chase. We've had people call their moms saying, what should I do? Um, so we don't know exactly what he's doing at this hour, though it did appear he was talking on a cell phone and digging in his pockets and digging elsewhere in the car, maybe the glove compartment for something. You see that baseball cap again, that white baseball cap. And Tammy, you, you, you may got be... a clear shot of him, Tammy. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, again, it's very difficult to watch these. I have covered so many high-speed chases, and, you know, again, you just hold your breath until they get him into custody. And, you know, this just makes you nervous. I mean, he is driving slow right now. We don't know if there's something wrong. Uh, you know, if he's on something or hurt or something, you know, he stops, and then he opens up the door, gets back in. Uh, you know, obviously not ready to listen to officer commands. So, you know, this makes me very nervous like this. Um, you know, it's good at least they have the freeway shut down at this point. Um, you know, you'd rather be have a bunch of people late to work uh, than any more um, problems. You know, we're going to zoom out here a little bit. You know, the freeway on the other side is slow as well. Um, and again, I, he's not going to get very far. So, Pulling over once to the again, show. he's pulled over. And you have a police motorcycle officer on the other side of the freeway coming against the traffic. Uh, maybe wondering if he's going to jump over that retaining wall and try and run across the freeway. I'm mm. sure they don't exactly know exactly. They don't know where he's going to go or what he's going to do. Well, you never know what leads people to do this, sure. which makes you question what they're going to be doing next. So they're trying to be prepared as they possibly can be, and of course to protect any of the drivers who are in this area right now. Mm. This there is, is taking an interesting turn here. And um, now he's turning around towards officers. Towards the officers. Um, this is all possibly going to come to an end right now. I mean, he is facing officers right now. He is a threat. The vehicle is a threat. You know, he is facing towards officers right now. Boy, this is... And now he's turning back around again. You just have to wonder what in the world is going through his mind, you know, and why he won't stop, why he won't just, you know, we saw him put his hands out the window and, and show us what appeared to be a cell phone. I was wondering if he was asking officers to call him. What, what, what are you saying with the cell? What are you doing? He's leaning over. We saw him opening the door, closing the door, stopping. Uh, continuing to go then he drove and he, he was on the shoulder it appeared he was getting out then he closed the door again and now he's continuing we do know that the back left tire um, is completely blown out he's riding on the rim it appears we saw the smoke coming from the left rear tire and he may have uh, problems going any faster than what he's doing now I hear he's moving again so, Tom, this all started around 7.50 mm -hmm. or so this morning. So this has been going on. We, we are approaching an hour right. for this police chase.
started on the I-10, the Baytown East Freeway, headed inbound near John Ralston. It took the 610 East Loop southbound, went past 225, went past I-45, then onto the 610 South Loop westbound, past 288, then got off at the South Post Oak exit, continued down South Post Oak, made a U-turn, went back the opposite direction, and then right back onto the 610 South Loop. And that's where we are now, uh, just past NRG, going eastbound toward 288 and toward I-45. But a crawl here, and he's periodically stopped and started. And as you can see there on the left side of your screen, that's the camera images that we're capturing from Houston Transdar. Uh, those freeway cameras positioned along the freeway, we've been following them there. So this is using the Almeda camera. We've watched them there at Kirby, also at Fannin. Uh, they are just past NRG, just crossed underneath the Astrodome footbridge over the freeway, and just continuing to roll along here. And of course, police trying to use every effort they can to try to make sure this ends. Uh, as safely as possible for this driver, but also for everybody else who is in this area and trying to pass through and just get about their normal business. And you may be wondering why when he turned around and sort of faced off with police with his vehicle just a couple of seconds ago, why police didn't come around the backside because there are certain procedures they do follow. Now here you're gonna get an officer coming up ahead of him um, and maybe set up some kind of blockade ahead. We're not sure, but- not sure how they would approach that one. Maybe, yeah. oh, blocking off, the, it appears that officer's blocking off, off the, the exit. The exit. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right. So cars do not try and get back on the loop going in that same direction from the feeder road. And traffic is stopped on the other side. Mm -hmm. I guess uh, they're wondering too, what what is going on? Right. At this point, you're hearing the police helicopter. You're hearing our helicopter. You're seeing all this activity, seeing it roll by you. So certainly a lot of attention on this. He keeps looking out his window. Have you seen him look out the window? I haven't seen him open the door at this speed, but when he slows to a... Coming up on Alameda right now, Alameda. Alameda. When he slows to a stop, he opens his door quite often, or has. So, Catherine, this has been a slow speed chase since... Which exit was that? I mean, he stopped at... I mean, basically, since, uh, since Buffalo Speedway and Kirby. Kirby? Okay. Uh, between Buffalo Speedway and Kirby. I mean, the entire time he went back onto the loop, he's been below freeway speeds, but really just here at this crawl since between Buffalo Speedway uh, and Kirby. So, and Samika, as you pointed out there, you can see that his back left tire, which you can't really see in this shot right now, but it appears that the rubber of the tire is just completely peeled away from the rim. Uh, which is certainly a reason why he can't go too much faster than this anyway. Uh, but a lot of movement inside that car. We've seen him moving around. We've seen him reach for the cell phone. We saw that cell phone plugged in, opening and shutting his, his door, his uh, rear driver or his front driver's side door. And, um, and, and looking as if maybe he would come out. At one point, it appeared he had uh, his hands coming Both out hands, of the car. Right. Oh, Both hands. The hands. There you go. Good. There's another look there on the side of, to the left of your screen there, Transtar, zooming into him there too. You see again that white baseball cap and he appears to be driving, handling the vehicle with only one hand. Mm -hmm. uh, Tammy said, you know, it appears he was leaning over the steering wheel, potentially injured. We don't know if he injured himself or what the circumstances are surrounding that, but uh, authorities um, thought potentially that he was armed. So, of course, they are taking caution with that. Uh, he's slowing down. Uh, so this began in Baytown, they're now telling us, a 911 okay. call about a disturbance in Baytown. So the ch chase began there. We picked it up at John Ralston Road at I-10 East, where it came into use and then came down the East Loop southbound, then under the South Loop westbound, all the way to Post Oak, and now back here as it goes toward the uh, southbound or the South Loop, I should say, eastbound, past Almeda, and now you start approaching Telephone Road and all those exits that lead um, into the area of Hobby Airport. Now he appears to be stopped again. Looking at the, uh, the camera here near 610 South Loop and 288 on the left side of your screen, uh, that's from Transtar. So you can see the all that traffic there in the westbound direction uh, just backed up because of rubbernecking. We also saw a motorcycle officer on the shoulder lane of the 610 South Loop westbound, of course, trying to just make sure that tr the traffic there is, is safe and those drivers are safe there, headed the opposite direction going westbound toward the Galleria area. Uh, but again, this is here on the 610 South Loop headed eastbound 
uh, for anybody trying to get to Hobby Airport this morning. Because the 610 South Loop eastbound is shut down, you'll want to take 45 as a way to get there. And for anybody trying to head toward 45 or 225, again, you'll need to avoid the 610 South Loop going eastbound as this police chase still continues with this driver rolling along basically at walking speed right. at this point. Right. So this is uh, the information we just received here into our newsroom. Uh, this is from Baytown Police saying uh, that this chase started there after a 911 call for disturbance where a male reportedly pistol whipped a female. And when officers arrived there on the scene, the suspect got into a vehicle and then took off. And that is how the chase started. So this is why police uh, said that he was potentially armed and dangerous because uh, he was involved, mm -hmm. uh, allegedly involved in a pistol whipping incident uh, with a female. And this is how all of this started in Baytown. Oh, that's a, about another 20 miles to the east of Houston. This mm. has gone on for quite a while then if it began in Baytown. We just picked it up at about 10 minutes to 8 this morning or almost an hour ago right at John Ralston Road and I-10. He has covered a lot of territory this yes. morning, uh, certainly disrupted traffic there on I-10 East, going on the 610 West Loop and South Loop, where it headed westbound uh, on South Post Oak, and now blocking off traffic here, going eastbound on the 610 South Loop past NRG. So we don't know who he potentially was on the phone with. Mm -mm. Uh, and, and now with this information, you have to wonder um, if he was trying to call somebody concerning this situation. As you mentioned, Tom, we've seen so many times where they've been, you know, at least one time they called the news station here. They've been on the phone with their mom. We don't know uh, because we did see him with both hands out the window, one of them holding a cell phone, which appeared to be charging in the or in the car there. Um, but this is just a very bizarre, but I mean, just well, how do you bring chase. How do you bring this to an end? I don't know. This continues to go on at this slow speed. Mm -hmm. Do they try and get in front of him and box him in? We haven't seen any kind of maneuver like that yet. We did see a pit maneuver. We saw but a pit maneuver as they tried to knock his car around. Mm -hmm. Didn't seem to work. Yeah. And as slow as he's going now, this is also a person who is going very, very fast on the opposite side of town, you know, driving uh, past uh, faster than the flow of traffic, certainly jumping onto sidewalks, driving on the shoulder lane. Um, at one point, got very, very close to two different school buses as he was passing traffic, um, weaving in and out of traffic, cutting across freeway lanes, going in the opposite direction of traffic. Uh, but now here we are at a crawl uh, headed eastbound. And Tammy, as you pull out a little bit with that shot there. It doesn't appear to be any police officers up ahead of him or any attempt to block the freeway, does there? I'll zoom out for you. Uh, he's coming up on 288. Well, at this speed, it's going to take quite some time to get there. Um, but again, the freeway is shut down, southbound 610. You have a lot of delays on the opposite side as people head westbound uh, as you're checking this out. And again, he's slowing down. Uh, quite a bit, but he's continuing to move. The back tire, uh, the rim, or the tire is about to fall off the rim, so that's why he's going slow there. Um, we are communicating with the police helicopter to, you know, give them information about what I'm seeing up here. Um, obviously, I'm not releasing everything, but, you know, it does appear that he might be hurt or something just because of the way he's moving in the front of the vehicle. And we did see while he was playing around with his cell phone, uh, something that appeared to be, you know, small and black, uh, you know, that he well, was putting inside well, right. his jacket uh, uh, Tammy, his pants, and he's turning off right now. Yeah, he's going around that uh, DPS car because, and did you see there was a, a one officer who put out spike strips? Yeah, I can see that. And that is why he took the exit, going around that DPS uh, SUV. Uh, speeding up a bit, by the way. So we did see uh, that there was uh, an officer ahead and of this, this chase. This is the ramp to 288 North that he took. The ramp to 288 North, but that is why uh, police officers are being very careful at this point uh, because of the reports, like they mentioned, that he had pistol whipped someone. Uh, so they believe that he might be armed. Uh, so this makes it, you know, a much different situation of how they go, are going to approach. Now it comes to the stop. Vehicle. The door is open. Mm -hmm. We've seen this scene before, so we're about to see how this one plays out. Police keeping their distance this time. They got a little bit closer to him last time when he came to a complete stop. We have a sharpshooter on the left side.
the door closes yet again. Right. And they did have a police dog out before. And it takes off again at slow speed. the traffic moving once again on the uh, southbound east or south loop eastbound lanes because he is on the ramp that will lead to 288 northbound into downtown Houston. That ramp appears to be shut down. Um, uh, police must have gone ahead of him uh, because there are no cars at all on the ramp. Well, you, could, you almost watch this in silence because you just have no idea what's about to happen with this this suspect starting and stopping. And in case you were just now joining us, this police chase started now more than an hour ago in Baytown. Baytown police saying that they were called out to a, a location there, 911 call for disturbance where a male uh, had reportedly pistol whipped a female. And when officers arrived, that suspect jumped into this uh, gray Ford SUV and started this chase. This chase has really, I mean, gone across uh, the city with it now along the... This is 288, 288 the northbound ramp. ramp from the south loop to 288 northbound, or it goes on to 288 from here and then into downtown Houston. To the left of those new ramps, there are building, but this will lead him right into downtown Houston if he would continue going on here. He's pulling over again. Oh. Um... Season. Right next to the gate there of the, uh, the railing. Okay, the door's opening yet again. Let's see what happens here. Yes. Almost as if he contemplates giving up each time. And then he jumps back in the car. This has been at least seven or eight times that we've seen the, him stop, and then the door opens, and then he takes back off. Well, and you hope what's going through yeah. his mind is he's not contemplating jumping right. off that ramp, right. but he did pull up next to the right. guardrail right. on this 288 flyover ramp as it goes into downtown Houston now. Again, if you're just joining us, this all began actually more than an hour ago, but we've been covering it for better than an hour now. A chase that began in Baytown with reports of a disturbance. A man said to be pistol whipping a woman. When Baytown police arrived there, they said he jumped in the car and took off and the chase was on, coming back westbound toward Houston and then down the east loop and then onto the south loop. And now they are back toward downtown Houston on the 288 ramp from the South Loop that will head into downtown Houston here in another mile or so. And it has gone at high speeds and it has gone at very slow speeds. You see them passing over that freeway traffic underneath uh, this rambling connecting from the 610 South Loop onto 288 North down. He's now heading toward downtown Houston on that ramp but at a very slow speed. Here we go, coming to another stop. and going again. And Tom, you mentioned something saying police are staying a little farther back. Um, they were a little closer to him earlier, but he's done the start stop so much until I guess they want to make sure before they jump out of the vehicle again. So Mika, as you mentioned, it's almost as if he's contemplating, you know, what to do next, stopping and starting, opening the door, opening the window, closing the door, stopping, pulling up against the, the guardrail there on that ramp um, from 288 and 610. At this point, picking up a little bit more speed 
and police certainly keeping their distance. And we saw some strange movements throughout this um, police chase. We saw the suspect. We, we know that it's a male suspect. We've seen that he's wearing a, a white baseball cap and what appears to be a um, black and a white striped jacket. Black and white striped jacket. Uh, we saw him stop, uh, put his hands out of the vehicle, both hands, but one of them. In one hand, he was holding a, a cell phone, which appeared to be charging. We don't know if he was on the phone with someone. We saw him also checking his pockets, uh, ferociously checking his, his pockets. Uh, we don't know, you know, if he had something in the. But we do know that uh, police believe that he is armed um, because he's suspected in uh, a pistol whipping incident. Police say he pistol whipped a female in Baytown. So they are taking a lot of caution with this suspect who has led them on this slow speed chase. Boy, uh, yeah. That's the All Holly Hall camera yes, vantage Hall, point okay. on your left. So We're this trying to show now, you some Transtar like cameras, Catherine. Right, right, exactly, Tom. So it, he is now going on to 288. You can really see that there from the camera there on the left from Transtar. You can see some officers trying to get ahead of him. They are using uh, the median lanes where they actually have it coned off for all that construction in the area. They're blocking off more ramps to keep people from getting on to the freeway at that point to keep him from potentially exiting as well. Uh, but right now he has made that maneuver from the 610 South Loop on to 288 northbound approaching Holly Hall so we're getting closer to the medical center but of course obviously moving here at a very slow speed but he is now on to 288. See the officers going by on right. the left mm -hmm. under those roads under construction just beyond the barricade there. And you know really he can see that too so you're just wondering what he's thinking and what will happen next here. Uh, we saw him pull up to the the barrier, if you will, there along the freeway. He sort of pulled up, opened the door. Uh, we were wondering if he was about to get out. Tom saying, you know, hoping that this was not a, a terrible ending. Um, but we just have no idea what will happen here. Just taking this police chase slowly here. Right. I mean, it's just. Anytime you have somebody problem. fleeing police, there's yeah. also, always the possibility of a terrible ending. We've seen too many. Tammy, I'm with you. It just makes you nervous. Our, uh, Tammy is in. He's coming uh, up to the bridge right now on Holly Hall. And again, the freeway 288 northbound ahead of them is open, but police officers are trying to get to these exits um, and close the exits down so nobody can get on. However, 288 ahead of him northbound is still open. All right, let's see where he goes next. At this speed, Catherine, it's a long way into downtown Houston, even up to the medical center. That's a couple of miles from there. It is. It is quite a while. But, you know, police officers now trying to determine how to make sure that the public is protected with this going on right now and closing those entrance ramps onto 288, closing uh, exits potentially as well to keep him from exiting the freeway there. Um, and at this point, they are just trying to work to make sure they can keep the situation under control and protect drivers, so many of them using 288 to access downtown Houston and the medical center. It appears that people along the feeder there are standing outside their cars, um, just right. sort of watching to see what's going on here. That may actually be a, a, a dangerous thing to do right now because we just, we have no idea. Um, what this suspect is thinking or what, what he has there in the, the vehicle. And if you're just joining us, almost 20 minutes ago, he came to a complete stop on the south loop, the eastbound lanes of the south loop. It appeared as though he had his hands out of the car ready to surrender. They had a police dog ready to take him down. There you see a couple of people watching from nearby wondering what in the world is going on. They've got a very, very clear view of that suspect. So he block off the um, ramp at the end of this, uh, one of the ramps, but uh, then they moved. Okay, well, he's come so to So it appears that they're just staying behind him, is how they're proceeding, because they're staying behind him, and they're just blocking off exits so nobody else can get on the freeway. Going on to the uh, overpass there. That's the Holly Hall Bridge. Is Did he, he stop there under the bridge? Looks like he stopped. We're, yes, we're, he's now stopped mm -hmm. underneath the bridge right now. We can also see Transtar as well as Sky. Oh, yeah.
this stop, so it makes it a little bit more difficult to see what's going on. Sky changing the iris a little bit so we can, oh, well, there he goes again. Yeah. This is now going on for, I mean, well over an hour. It has. Well, if something ha happened to him in the meantime that has caused him to drive so slowly and so erratically, you don't know what it was because before he was going maybe close to 100 miles an hour, weaving in and out of traffic trying to put police far behind him, but they were managing to keep up with him. Now, this is just at maybe five miles an hour, 10 miles an hour, as he makes his way up 288 toward downtown Houston, really toward the medical center first. And it's mainly because of that back tire, that back left tire. I mean, he's riding on the rim there. Uh, as Catherine described it, the, the rubber is peeling off the tire. Looks like he may be coming to another, and he's speeding up there. The next exit will be Yellowstone on 288 okay. North. I'm going to tell you, uh, Tammy, he looks pretty relaxed now. It, it looks like his uh, arm is on the console, the right arm. Instead of forward onto the steering wheel. Look, we see him looking around again. again occasionally, Tammy. we see him grab stuff, either playing with his phone. You know, I don't know if he's listening to some music because he's rocking back and forth as well, wow. or, you know, not feeling well. It's kind of... Okay. And now he's pulling over once again. There's a cop car in front of oh, him. There we go. Today. All right. Oh, there's the spike strips. He's going to try and get around him. Actually, yeah, the spike strips were behind him. So, again, either proceeding with caution. You know, this is a different scenario when you think somebody is armed. You know, they're staying behind him, back of him. When he does stop, they get the sharpshooters out and stuff and, and the dogs, but they're not getting in front of him. Obviously, you don't want to give him the chance that if he is armed, to shoot out in front, out that window. Sure. that they believe that he's possibly armed and you know they're proceeding with caution um i've had the uh, atc that's air traffic control shut off for just a little bit uh because there's a lot going on up here um but they've actually asked me uh for a description of him they've asked me what i've seen because uh, our cameras are very powerful we actually can get a better picture uh, than the, what they can in their helicopter sometimes so i've been able to give them uh, a little information to help them out um, and we're exchanging information um, you know we are aware that he is wanted uh, for an alleged pistol whipping incident and that's why they believe that he is armed uh, at one point they weren't sure whether he had hurt himself um, so again that's why we're trying to get a better picture of how he looks up front and again you know we don't know if he's injured but, you know, at times he is kind of hanging over the steering wheel. And then he's also grabbing onto his stomach. Yeah. I mean, at times it looks like he's moving something around. And I have seen something small, black in nature, that possibly may look like a gun. But he also looks like perhaps maybe his, his stomach or his lower area is hurt. Because I see him rubbing, or appears to be rubbing his stomach or something like that. Um, as well as, again, playing with his phone, you know, plugging it in. You know, we saw him would appear to look like he was text messaging. Um, I didn't see him on the phone, but it did look like he was text messaging. And then possibly at one point taking pictures. Um, to me, that's what it looked like when he was sticking his phone outside the window. It looked like he was almost snapping pictures. Um, and again, now he's picking up a little bit of speed. I'll zoom out here again. He's on the 288 northbound traffic. Uh, obviously, the freeway is shut down. He 
He's coming up on O S T. You know, Tammy, in another 20 minutes or so, we could be approaching two hours. And when the chase began in Baytown, right? Right? And for those of you wondering, yep, we do cooperate with police, certainly, on these chases to give them information. We're getting information from them. We certainly want to help them pin the pinpoint the location of anybody who's fleeing from police. So they take information from us, from our sky camera and helicopter, and they're able to figure things out from the information that is fed to them as well from up above. And now notice the change yeah, in the... Yeah, at times, Tom, you know, we will lose the vehicle or they lose the vehicle, uh, and then we help each other, you know, find it. And also, Doug, of course, on the desk has been very helpful as well. You know, everybody just kind of working together so that we can keep people away from this area, obviously. And again, now it looks like something may be wrong with him. I don't know if he's rocking back and forth to the music or if he's not feeling well or he's hurt. But again, his appearance has changed again. He just kind of goes back and forth. This is right here at Holcomb, an old Spanish trail, the uh, overpass there that he's crossing underneath on 288. Now, is that about as close a shot as you can get, Tammy? Yeah, this is actually, we have a, uh, what's called a doubler. We have it all the way pushed in. Now, sometimes you will see a little bit of um, fluctuation with the camera. That's the exhaust from the helicopter. Uh, and then I'm adjusting the lighting. Um, so this is about as close as we can get. Um, and obviously, we have to stay at a certain distance away from the situation because we have two police helicopters and another news media helicopter up here. So we are all kept at a very safe uh, distance. And so, yeah, this is as close as we can get. But, you know, we can see quite a bit um, that it is uh, what appears to be a male driver with a white baseball cap, white shirt, and wearing a jacket. And again, now it looks like he's possibly text messaging again, or he's on mm -hmm. his phone. Yeah. You right. see his right hand there, is sifting through stuff uh, while he's driving. So, you know, to me, to me, it appears that he is on his phone in some capacity, possibly texting. And Tammy, we've noticed a change in the uh, police vehicles behind him. Uh, they have appeared to turn to the police SUVs. Looks like um, a change in the positioning of those vehicles. All of them black SUVs now. Um, I don't know if those are uh, tactical units tactical or tactical units or negotiators or. I know uh, one is from the canine officers because they had the uh, police dog in one of those black vans that they brought out before. Right. We saw patrol cars first, but now you see these black tactical, what appears to be tactical units there right. following behind him. There was a state trooper that was part of this mm -hmm. chase early on. He has dropped off to the back. Not exactly sure uh, who has moved up front. He's coming up on Old Spanish Trail, okay. as Catherine mentioned. And again, they're going at a very slow pace. Well, you just wonder how long he continued. Yeah, and all the officers, you know, stay, are staying behind him. We haven't noticed anybody get out in front other than to block off the exit so that nobody else can get on the freeway. So there's two, four, six, eight, nine, maybe ten police vehicles in the near vicinity right behind him. Then it appears as though some kind of police van you see, that white van that's there. Um, I'm just trying to figure out what units are on the scene and who's following the closest. Is, is that, Tammy, is, is that the white hat? It's his white jacket. Oh, is that the jacket? Yeah, he has, he's wearing a white shirt. With oh, the white shirt, I see. Darker jacket yeah, over him, and he's still wearing the white baseball cap. And then at times, like, you see him kind of grabbing his stomach every now and then, too. It looks like he's grabbing that area, but, and as well as having his phone on him, or at least, at least he looks like he's looking at his phone. And is this the old Spanish Trail crossover? That is correct, Tom. This is the old Spanish Trail bridge that he's going under. And 
He is still moving, yes. albeit very slowly. So many people are on the ABC 13 app right now um, streaming this and, and watching this because many of them started with this uh, chase uh, about, what, almost two hours ago, um, and it is still going on. And if you're just now joining us, 9.13 now, uh, but this chase started, I, I suppose, sometime after 7.30 or so with Baytown police. This happened in Baytown. Police, Baytown police saying that it started as a disturbance call there to 911, a report of a male pistol whipping a female. And when officers arrived there on scene in Baytown, they say the suspect, the one you see uh, driving along here, leading police on this chase in this gray uh, Ford SUV. They say the suspect jumped into that SUV and led police on a chase. And again, that was almost two hours ago. This has been a high-speed chase, and it's now a slow-speed chase. We've seen the suspect riding on the, the shoulder, riding on the sidewalk, speeding through intersections. Uh, at one time, I mean, he has stopped at least eight or nine times now, opened the door at one time, putting both of his hands out of the window. Uh, one in one hand, a cell phone, which appeared to be charging. It was connected to a cord. We don't know if he is texting someone or calling someone, but police believe that he is armed. Uh, so they are taking caution with this. We've seen uh, an attempted pit maneuver. We've seen them thrown, uh, throw spike strips out at least, at least twice. Right. Uh, but he's gone around them. We saw him even turn around and, and what appeared to be uh, him headed toward officers. Then he quickly made a turn there and uh, headed in the opposite direction. And, and this is where we are here uh, at 288 northbound uh, at Holcomb at a slow speed. He once again is on the shoulder heading very closely to the barrier there. And we can only imagine he will open the door. We don't know what will happen next. Okay, they're going to, it looks, box in his car right here. This is going to be the end that they're... The police officers around there. Police dog. Yep. Sharpshooter. Officers taking their stance. Suspect still in the car with the door closed. And he's got nowhere to go now. Yeah. Officer on the ground. With the rifle in hand. With a clear view of the suspect. I do not see him putting his hands out the window. He's moving around movement. in the front seat again. You see that? There he is. White hat. Let's hope he just gets out of the Let's car the with his hands cap. up. Baseball cap moving back and forth. North of Old Spanish Trail. Or Holcomb, sorry. Holcomb, Holcomb yes. right. There's the baseball cap moving back and forth again. We don't know if he's injured. Another police vehicle pushing in. It appears as if he's looking behind him. Still moving around there in the vehicle. It's hard to see whether he's still talking on the phone, whether he has that phone in his hand. Hopefully he does not have a weapon in his hand. Yeah. These are SWAT vehicles that are now surrounding him. SWAT team, including a canine team with the dogs ready to go as well. I would rather get him out of the car with a dog if he opens the door than have to use any other force, that's for sure. There's a SWAT unit pulling in. We can still see that baseball cap moving around there in the car on the driver's side. We don't know if he's talking to officers or yeah. if he's still on that cell phone. Well, if you've ever been on the end of one of these chases, you know they're yelling, get out of the car, right. get your hands up, get down on the ground. And they continue yelling it until they maybe can talk to him and make some sense out of the situation as to why he stays in the car.
Now, we saw that white vehicle tailing the officers from the SWAT team that are in the black vehicles. It turns out someone from HPD tells us that is the bomb squad. Mm. So perhaps in light, in the wake of the uh, Austin bombings, they are taking no, they are taking all precautions they can to prevent anything at all from happening here. They don't know why this man, uh, or they know why he fled. This is the initial call if you're just joining us. This was in Baytown this morning. About an hour and a half ago, we believe, maybe even two hours, mm -hmm. where there was an initial call of a man pistol whipping a woman. And when police in Baytown arrived on the scene, they said he took off and the chase was on. And that's when it led its way back into Houston at high speed. And then it turned around on the loop, the West Loop, actually, on Post Oak, just south of the West Loop. He turned around and then he came back on the southbound, on the south loop, I should say, in the eastbound lanes where he's made his way all the way up to 288 now near the medical center. And this is where it has complete, come to a complete stop and hopefully, hopefully a peaceful ending here. The question is, what do you do next to get him out of the car? Right. Well, you see officers are pushed all the way up to that vehicle. You don't see the door open, <clears throat> but the suspect is still moving around there in the driver's seat. Uh, it appeared that he was looking behind him maybe to sort of see, uh, you know, all the, the police presence uh, behind him and around him. I mean, sh sharpshooters, police dogs, the SWAT vehicles. We can only imagine, Tom, as you mentioned, that they are talking to him and trying to get him out of the car and, and try to have a, a peaceful ending here. And so we're hoping for the same thing here. These officers have protocol and training for exactly right. what to do in situations like this. And this is when they really do put it to the test and, and see what happens. But this driver's behavior has been just so erratic from the very beginning. It's been very difficult to tell what he may or may not do next. Yeah. And for those of you that wonder what do police officers do in a situation like this, they put their lives on the line right there. This is, mm -hmm. yeah, wow. and now he's taking okay, off he's again. now he's taking off. He's taking off. Wow. We don't know what happened here and what wow. led to this. You see the back tire there. He's going around officers. You see firefighters there on scene as well. Just so that strange. back tire out, yep. and yet again, he is taking off. You saw the police officers with their uh, rifles running to get into their vehicles. There's another SWAT vehicle. He's going around the SWAT vehicle. This is just incredible. They moved the car, and then he ducked around them. You have, we have no idea what's being said there on the scene. What, mm -mm. You know, mm -mm. We don't know if he told them he was about to get out of the car and why they moved that vehicle. But you see, he is yet again on the move. It's almost as if he faked them out, in a way. So strange. Yet again on the move there. Mm -hmm. But I would think now you're going to have them boxing go. him off again. Yeah. And maybe again, another pit maneuver. Yeah. As soon as they can Here. get up to the side of him or ahead of him. He actually saw some of these uh, construction workers there who were on 288 stopping what they were doing. The suspect here weaving because we know that tire. Mm -hmm. He's riding on a ramp. Is he exiting the freeway here, Catherine? This or is, is yep. 288, and this has is to be McGregor. McGregor. Right? Exiting McGregor. 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 Okay. Okay. All right, and they just boxed him in just there. Boxed him. He's turning There's, around. He's got nowhere to go nowhere here. To go. Got nowhere to go. And he. Mm. Pretty clear shot there. He's got his hands up. Hands up. Appear to be up. It does appear. Gonna have to get his oh, hands. Just touch the steering wheel. Yeah, he's gonna have to get his hands up and out. Out. Closing the door. Closing the door. Closed it. He's pointing up to the helicopter. McGregor. It is McGregor. This is the McGregor exit he's off 288 northbound. Rolled the window down and now appears to be putting. His hands out the window. Yeah. But we've seen this before. Right. Don't know if he's injured or emotional. We're just not sure what's going on here. Oh, that banner. There you go. He's on his phone again. He's picked up his Texting phone. Or something. It appears that he's on his phone. Head all the way back there on the, the seat.
panting and breathing very hard. We, we just don't know what's happening. Police moving in, they're bashing moving in the window. Him. I see gunfire. Break, they're breaking the glass. They're breaking the glass. Police are giving him instructions, but you saw him try to run out of the vehicle. And now, now they're, they're pulling the dog out. in. They're letting the dog in. There they go. There goes. They have him on the ground. <sighs> wow. Finally in custody. So hard to watch. It is very hard to watch, and it's very difficult for police to know what he's going to do next, whether he's going to pull a gun, whether their lives are in grave danger, and they are at every moment on a scene like that. And there you have it, the end of this chase now that we've been covering for the better part of an hour and a half here. Once again, if you're just joining us, this all began in Baytown maybe two, two and a half hours ago with a disturbance call, a report of a man pistol whipping a woman. That is the man right there arrested after a long chase that came into town on I-10 down the east loop, southbound, and then on the south loop, all the way to Post Oak and back again to Telephone Road, uh, uh, excuse me, to uh, 288, and then McGregor. up on 288, the McGregor exit that's right there. We are just so grateful that this has ended. Yeah. I mean, you know, police now searching him, and because, as you know, uh, they said that he was armed. Uh, based on the, the 911 call of, of him allegedly pistol whipping a woman in Baytown, but this chase has finally ended. I mean, just a few minutes ago, it appeared that the chase was about to end, and he somehow is able to maneuver his way and get around police, continuing on to 288, where he then exited here at McGregor. Police boxed him in completely, bashed out the window. He appeared to try to open the door. It got really, really tense at that moment, and police came in, pulled him out of the car, and okay. he is now in Well, now here comes the EMS, an ambulance crew. So maybe there was something wrong with him. It would appear as though they will be taking him to the hospital in that ambulance that was trailing behind. Usually at the end of these chases, you see them put him in the back of a squad car. He'll be departing in an ambulance, I think. Well, everyone will be curious to know what was wrong with this driver and why he fled police and acted so strangely, drove so erratically, stopping and going and refused to get out of the car at the end there until they could pull him out. Yeah, and a lot of people will be questioning what was going on with that cell phone? Who was he calling? Uh, you know, was he talking to police? What happened when he was able to drive around police? But thankfully, this suspect is in custody at 288 and McGregor, this chase going on for almost two hours here. The suspect, as you see on the, the it appears, is he on the gurney there? Firefighters are surrounding that scene now. Uh, he, he, I believe the suspect is on a gurney. We do know that he is being checked out by Houston firefighters there on scene. SWAT on scene. We saw the sharpshooters, police dogs. Boy, this was just... Well, thankfully, they didn't have to use their weapons. Incredible chase here. You know, what started out as a, a high-speed chase ended over the last 45 minutes as a slow-speed chase. Barely moving along and barely, stopping just barely. at many points. Well, as soon as we know what was going through this man's head, why he was stopping and going and refused to get out of the car, we will certainly bring it to you. We will update you not only right here live if we continue with this, but certainly on ABC13.com, and we'll send out a notification immediately on our ABC13 news app. We're trying to wait and see if this the suspect will be loaded into an ambulance. It appears he is on yeah. a journey. There yeah, he is. there he goes. He's being loaded into an ambulance. So we don't know if he injured himself or or what happened to him, but we do know he's hurt. So his, his shirt is off. And uh, Tammy, I, I don't know, he may have been uh, holding on to his stomach, maybe something, maybe he did injure himself, uh, who knows? 
Yeah, you know, police officers, first of all, did an incredible job. We Absolutely. have no one hurt that we know of other than uh, the possible suspect here. Uh, it's just amazing to watch this ending, how they were able to knock out the glass window and not use any weapons and guns. And again, I mean, he is being taken away in an ambulance. Uh, but with no injuries or no other vehicles getting hit, this is just an incredible end to a wild high-speed chase that lasted uh, for more than an hour. And thankfully, no one else we, that we know of was hurt except for the man who was fleeing from police. This is one of the first chases we've covered where the fleeing driver hasn't run into someone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there were so many close calls. Mm -hmm. I mean, you hold your breath. You know, he was so erratic at times before his tire gave way and then finally slowed down. Uh, and then to hear that he possibly may have had a weapon. And so, you know, these things can turn out uh, in so many different ways. To, but to come to an ending, uh, you know, with no injuries other than the suspect and or his possible victim, uh, it, it's just, you know, amazing and incredible to watch. And again, we really have to say hats off to all these police officers that just did an incredible job, including uh, the police helicopter PD pilots up here as well. All right, Tammy, great job, and great job for our pilot covering this and keeping us with this chase all along the way. Uh, this uh, fleeing man, fleeing suspect, will be taken to the medical center. We don't know exactly where, but Jeff Ealing is there and joining us on the phone. Jeff? Okay, good morning, guys. Yeah, we've been trying to get to this police chase for the better part of an hour and a half or so, as you've seen on ABC 13 and ABC 13 News app. This guy's been going all over the south side of the city. And then once it got up to 288, we were actually uh, about three-quarters of a mile behind the scene, and then police completely shut down uh, the 610 loop headed uh, eastbound just uh, uh, by the Kirby exit. So uh, for about 45 minutes or so, traffic was just at a dead stop there, even though the suspect had made his way, his way onto 288. We are traveling through the medical center now, but I can tell you just about every uh, turn you take throughout the south uh, eastern and south portion of the city is going to be uh, traffic is backed up uh, quite a bit right now as we're trying to get uh, to the scene. But uh, we're on our way there, and uh, hopefully we'll be there in just a few minutes live on the ground. Okay. Well, when they shut down major freeway like that, the traffic has to go somewhere, and people exit off into the medical center and elsewhere. Yeah, well, uh, as you know, a lot of people talking about this on social media as they were watching it uh, streaming live. W one person here on Twitter saying that this happened about 100 yards from a YMCA daycare. Uh, so thankfully, this all ended um, safely here. Catherine, boy, you've been watching this with us. and. And boy, this is just incredible. It, it really is. And police working so hard not only to try to make this chase come to a quick and safe ending, but also to protect the traveling public as well. And because of that, they shut down a lot of exits, shut down a lot of freeways, including what you're seeing right here, which is 288 and part of the feeder, which is blocked off northbound at McGregor. So currently, the police chase has come to an end, as you're seeing him. They're loading him up to into an ambulance, trying to take him away. And uh, traffic there is still blocked off on the northbound lanes of 288, the south freeway. So as we continue, with this drivers if you're trying to travel north on 288 i know a lot of you may have appointments in the medical center maybe trying to get to downtown houston 288 is still currently blocked off here just north of the 610 interchange between the areas there around mcgregor and holly hall so if you're continuing in that area it is blocked off at mcgregor traffic is also backed up not only on 288 but also onto the 610 south loops so that spillover effect that we've had from the closure there on 288 affecting traffic and is backed up all the way to beach nuts. So again, those areas still seeing a lot of very heavy congestion. If you normally take 288, you'll want to avoid the area altogether. And as an alternate route, you can take Almeda or you can take Scott Street instead. Eastbound and westbound there on the 610 South Loop is back open and running. Those lanes are still moving and still clear now, but a bit slow as you approach 288 because of the backup from 288. So again, if you are normally a 288 driver, plan on taking Almeda or Scott Street instead. All right, Molly, you just see that suspect being moved on to another gurney and into mm -hmm. another ambulance. We're not sure why, but he will now be taken to the medical center for treatment there. And we will certainly keep you updated. As I said, abc13.com, or you can get the notifications mm -hmm. immediately on our ABC 13 News app. Meanwhile, uh, we will continue to stream this on our ABC 13 News app. Sky is still over that scene, so you can certainly go to the ABC News app right now. We will go back to Kelly and Ryan right now.
Freeway inbound at McGregor. This is a police chase that started almost two hours ago in Baytown, resulting from uh, what was an assault with a gun. This, this uh, suspect took off, went down over on I-10, the Katy East Freeway, inbound toward downtown Houston, hopped onto the 610 East Loop, headed down south around the 610 South Loop, then down to South Post Oak, made a U-turn, went back onto the 610 South Loop, then onto 288, which is where that police chase ended. So at this point now, 288 still blocked off northbound at McGregor. If you're traveling in that area, your best alternate route is to use Almeda or to use Scott Street. Currently, the freeway is closed just down from where that police chase ended over at Belfort, just south of 610. So again, you can see the major backup here on our maps with all that red there on the map showing you just how slow those speeds are as you approach the medical center and downtown Houston. I want to take you up to Sky 13 and give you a live look right now at what the scene looks like currently. We can still see lots of traffic stopped here inbound on 288. Uh, the driver there was taken into custody and was loaded into an ambulance for treatment. Uh, traffic there, though, as you approach 288 northbound near McGregor at a complete standstill and all traffic being forced off of 288 at Belfort. So for those of you who are traveling northbound into town, plan on taking Almeda or Scott Street as your best alternate route. This is just gridlock here right on the northbound lanes of 288. I know a lot of people use 288 to try to get to the medical center for doctor's appointments or trying to get to downtown Houston at this time in the morning. But you can see where it's absolutely packed there with traffic on 288 inbound. Southbound lanes still currently open for the most part there on 288, but still seeing some backups outbound on 288 near the 610 interchange. A lot of congestion here because of construction anyway, but you can see where traffic is being forced off the freeway where it's jam-packed there on the feeder road northbound on 288, approaching the interchange with the 610 South Loop. And again, this all came to an end about five, ten minutes ago, and that driver of the uh, the SUV that we had police on that uh, police chase now in custody uh, and being treated for injuries. He was loaded into an ambulance, still getting information on where he may be being treated. But uh, we're hearing from Houston police that the 288 freeway will be shut down for an undetermined amount of time. But if you're traveling in that area, you'll want to make sure to plan on using those alternate routes. If Tammy is available, Tammy, if you're there, uh, want to see what you're seeing right now in terms of any movement there on 288 near 610. Well, 288 is still shut down northbound uh, past uh, Old Spanish Trail near McGregor, I believe. I'll zoom out here, um, and you can still, they're, they're still at a standstill here uh, until they're going to be able to finish their investigation and move things along. However, behind that accident, the backups are not too bad on the uh, 288 northbound. It looks like maybe a mile, mile and a half uh, of backup traffic there, but it is shut down. Catherine? Tammy, thank you so much for the update and uh, for your following this and all the great work this morning. So we appreciate that. We know Sky uh, has to land here briefly, but I do want to bring you back here and give you a look at your drive if you are traveling in on 288. So again, you will plan on using or need to use those alternate routes while police continue to conduct that investigation and wrap it up. Northbound lanes are still very heavy here as you approach where the freeway is closed. So take Almeda, take Scott Street as a way to get through. And if you're one of those drivers that can possibly use 45, the Gulf Freeway, that will be your best bet as well. Also seeing a lot of congestion southbound too, so if you possibly can, use 45 as your way out as well. I want to bring you to our Houston Transtar camera shots. You can see right here near 288 and Belfort where traffic is being forced off the freeway onto the 610 South Loop. So you can go either eastbound or westbound on 288 if you're headed northbound into town. So you still have the 610 South Loop as an option, but you cannot continue northbound on 288 past that point. Here we are at airport where traffic is moving it's a little bit farther south, but it's still congested on those northbound lanes. You can see that also here at Orem, where normally this time in the morning we see a little bit of a break from traffic and traffic moving a little bit faster speeds than this. But again, that backup there as a result of the closure still causing delays for drivers. Southbound lanes looking good, though. If you're traveling away from town, we are seeing some movement there. And I think we have Sky 13 back online here. So we'll give you a look at this right there near the interchange of the 610 South Loop and 288. So again, the northbound lanes still blocked off as they work to clear this. We had a lot of SWAT officers, a lot of Houston police officers uh, on scene here, that SWAT vehicle, police dogs as well. So in order to conduct that investigation and clear it completely out of the way, this will take a long time. Of course, they're trying to figure out exactly why this driver fled, you know, why it took so long for him to stop. At one point, this was a high-speed police chase.